Okay, so this is our very first integral problem, 21.79. Unless you've been to a lecture that has done it, but I don't think you have. Okay, so in this problem, we have our x and y axis. Woo! A positive charge Q is distributed uniformly along the x axis from x equals 0 to x equals A. Let's just go ahead and draw that. I'm making it a lot fatter than it actually is so you can actually see it. So in reality, this charge is smooshed into a tiny little straight line. So it's only in one dimension, not two like I have. Okay, we also have a point charge over here. The book calls it a distance r, but I'm going to use h because I like to use r in my equations and I don't want to get them mixed up. Okay, so we want to find the electric field at this point due to this bar of charge. Now the difference between what we've been doing here and what we've been doing in class is that we find the electric field due to point charges using Coulomb's law. That doesn't work here because this is not a point charge. So our E equals KQ over R squared R hat that we've been using, not going to be good here. However, we can look at this line of charge and we can chop it up into teeny tiny little itty bitty pieces with charge dq and we can find the electric field that each little itty bitty piece puts off. So basically what we're doing is we're taking a little slice of this field, calling it a point charge, and then we're going to add up all the teeny tiny little slices to get the total field. So this is essentially what you're doing when you're doing the integral version of Coulomb's law. So the electric field due to our teeny tiny little slice is going to be K, the charge is dQ over R squared R hat. So now we need to figure out what our R vector is. And this is why I chose H here instead of following the book and calling it R. So R points from our slice to the area that we care about. So that's going to be this distance here. So if we say our little slice is on the x-axis, some distance x. Since we're on the x-axis, it makes sense to use x as our coordinate. So this distance x is the location of our slice, and this distance r is how far away the point of interest is from our slice. So we can write that as a plus h, so the whole distance all the way over to our point, minus x, wherever our guy is. So that's going to give us this chunk right here. And now since we're just along the x-axis, this is technically our r vector and the i hat direction. And so our r hat is going to be i hat. So we don't have to worry about vectors here because it's all in 1D, which is nice. If we had a ring of charge, you would have to worry about that. Okay, so that means the magnitude of this guy is a plus h minus x. So now we can look at our electric field from our little slice is k dq over a plus h minus x squared. So here, our differential is dq. That's what we're adding up over. But our variable is x. So we want to figure out how to write dq in terms of x. And that's where your previous knowledge of densities and masses and all that stuff comes in. So if we know that the whole line has a total charge of q and a total length of a, then this tiny little piece is going to be some density times the thickness. So in this case, since we're in 1D, we're using our linear charge density, and then the thickness of our little guy is dx. 
since we have a nice constant charge and a straight line, the charge density is the total charge divided by the total length, and then we multiply it by the thickness dx. So our electric field is K Q over A dx over R squared, which was our A plus H minus X squared. Okay. So now we have an expression for the, in the electric field of one little slice. So now we want to add up all the slices using an integral. And our integral goes from zero to A, because that's where the end of the bar is to the top of the bar. So now we get to practice our math skills. So K, Q, and A are constant. So I'm gonna pull those guys out. We're integrating from zero to A. Our variable is DX, because that's what's changing. And then we have one over a plus h minus x squared. So it's easiest here to use a u substitution because I don't know how to integrate this off the top of my head. Sounds gross. And it's also good practice for your math class. So we're going to say u is all that crap in the bottom. A plus h minus x. So du is Derivative of a is zero, because it's constant. Derivative of h is zero, because it's constant. Derivative of minus x is minus one dx. So everywhere we see a dx, we're gonna plug in a minus du. So our electric field, let's get this up. It's gonna be kq over a integral Everywhere there's a dx, I plug in a minus du. So I'm going to put my minus sign out front. Put my du in there. Then we have 1 over u squared. Alright. So the integral of 1 over u squared is minus 1 over u. So my minuses are going to cancel out. We get kq over a times 1 over u. So if I plug my u back in, that gives me an a plus h minus x. And then we're going to evaluate it from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. Alright, so kq over a, plug in my first limit. So we have a plus h minus a minus, plug in our second limit, 1 over a plus h minus 0. So my a's here cancel. And my electric field, due to that bar of charge, over there at some point, p, it's going to be 1 over h minus 1 over a plus h. And that's it. So once you get your integral set up, it's not too awful. Alright, so for part B, I'm going to flip this page. Part B. Part B is calculate the force, magnitude, and direction that the charge distribution, big Q, exerts on little q. So this is going to be pretty easy. We found an expression for the electric field at that point already. It was kq over a, 1 over h minus 1 over a plus h, right? Yeah. So using our relationship, our F equals QE, all you have to do is multiply by Q. So the force is our little charge Q times K big charge Q over A, 1 over H minus 1 over A plus H. 
In our electric field, because big Q was a positive charge, it's going to be pointing outward along the x-axis. Because all of our y components are going to cancel out. Those don't exist because there is no y component in our R. So it's going to be in the i hat direction. Whoop. Okay. And part C. Show that if R is much, much greater than A. So that's what we called H. So A is much, much greater than A. The magnitude of the force in part B is approximately KQQ over R squared. So if H is much, much bigger than A, show that F is approximately K little Q big Q over R squared. So here's going to be h squared. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our force expression here. So in our force expression, we have k little q big Q over a. 1 over h minus 1 over a plus h. So here, okay, so it's going to be easier for us if we make this into one nice big expression. So let's go ahead and find our common denominator first. So over here, we're gonna cross multiply. So we'll have an A plus H over here with an H, A plus H, and then a minus H up here with an H, A plus H. So this is going to give us our KQQ over A, A plus H minus H, so those cancel. That gives me an A up here and an H, A plus H down here. My A's cancel out, so I get KQQ over H, A plus H. Okay. So now if we make this assumption that h is much, 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 much bigger than little a, the sum of a plus h is still going to be basically h. Because if a is itty bitty, itty bitty plus not itty bitty is not itty bitty, right? So it's like saying a million plus one. It's still basically a million, close enough. So if we do that then our force is approximately equal to KQQ over H squared, which is just like Coulomb's law. So if we get super duper far away from our little line of charge, it more or less looks like an individual point charge. So we can make these approximations if we're super, super far away from a line, it looks basically like a point from really far away. If we're super, super far away from a sphere, it looks like a point from far away. And that's that. <laughs>